This is Joe Maciars from A-Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about how to graph square root equations. Uh, specifically I want to talk about the parent function and we'll take a quick little look at what the rest of the family is going to look like, although we won't uh, deal with that too much. Uh, as usual we're working on the Apple Grapher today and let's go over to uh, the Apple Grapher. Okay, I've already prepared a bunch of stuff for us. So here's the star of today's little video, y equals the square root of x. Well, there's a few things we want to talk about uh, with y equals the square root of x before we actually start to talk about uh, the rest of the family. This is the parent function. Uh, y equals the square root of x can be transformed into the next equation, which is x is equal to y squared. And we can do that by squaring both sides and in this case then flipping it around uh, so that we get x equals y squared. If we go ahead and graph that, and this graphing calculator does a pretty good job of doing that, you see we get the blue dashed line. Let's turn the green one off for a moment. All right. And what you'll notice is this looks suspiciously like a parabola. In fact, it's not uh, just suspicious, it actually is a parabola. Uh, we can get it by exchanging the x and the y. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about some of the points and how we would graph uh, some of the points. Um, I've set that up right here. The idea here is not to choose the x first, as, as we would normally with a function, but rather to choose the y. The y is actually an easier value to choose. We can, for example, choose the values y equals 0, y equals 1, y equals 2, and y equals 3. Because then y is being squared to give us the x, we can figure out x from that. So if we square 0, we're going to get 0. If we square 1, we're going to get 1. If we square 2, we're going to get 4. If we square 3, 3 times 3 will be 9. So let's put these on successively. Well, let's put back on our equation as well. So uh, there is 0, 0. There is 1, 1. There is 2, 4. And right there, well, sorry, it's a little off to the side. Let's go grab the hand. I guess I've already got that. And move it over just a little bit. There it is. So let's move it just a little bit more. And there are our points. Uh, so that's an easy way to graph this. If you've looked at the uh, video I made earlier about easy graphing patterns, that is to uh, with a quadratic equation, you might remember that I talked about over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, over 1, up 7, the 1, 3, 5, 7 pattern. Well, that pattern applies here, it's just, it's backwards. Uh, instead of going over 1, we'll go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 3, up 1, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on down the line. So the 135 pattern, uh, 1357 pattern, continues to work here. And you can use that just as you would for a normal parabola. There is a subtle difference here, and that subtle difference you saw with the fact that this is half of a parabola, not the full parabola, as we have with the dashed line. So because we're taking the square root, you might note that the... Um, the other equation, and I did not include it, let's see if I can show it to you real fast. So let's put in a new equation, y would equal. And if you want to get your square root, um, now I'm going to want to put a negative sign there because that's the essence of the new equation, but your square root is under this little summation sign here. Uh, it's right here, and you can click that. It gives you the square root symbol right there, square root of x, and that's the negative part of it. Now, the reason that we typically use just the positive as opposed to the positive and the negative is because of the fact that individually these are functions. That is, this green one, let's take this one off, this is a function. You might recall there's a test for graphs, and that's called the vertical line test. If you uh, run a vertical line up and down and it only passes through the graph once, then it's a function. So this would be a function all by itself. This would be a function all by itself, but if we went ahead and looked at, whoops, looking at the wrong one there, 
this one all by itself, this would not be a function because any vertical line would pass through uh, any valid point twice. So for example, a vertical line at 3 would cross here and here, and therefore this is not a function. Okay, But clearly it's related to it. All right. Now, there's one other quick thing I want to talk about, um, and that is that this is related directly to a parabola. This is the line y equals x, and later on uh, in other videos we will talk about the fact that uh, this is a line through which after a rotation you can turn a relation into its inverse relation. Uh, specifically what I'm talking about here is uh, this was our original y equals x squared. Let me move this a little bit over again. So this line is our simple y equals x squared and if we rotate that about this uh, y equals line, uh, y equals x line, we will in fact get the dashed parabola. Let me get rid of the green line. We'll get that parabola. And to emphasize that, what I wanted to do was to show you a uh, another equation. And now this is a complicated equation. Uh, it's a parametric equation, and it's being multiplied by a matrice, uh, a two by two matrice. And I'm not going to talk about this now uh, in any great detail because, quite frankly, in order for you to understand this, it'd probably take me about six or seven videos. And, you know, right now we just don't have the time. Uh, the basic thing is that we're letting uh, x equal t, and then the y, since that's going to equal the x squared, will then become t squared because we're letting x equal t. Uh, this matrix is a 2 by 2 matrix that basically what that's going to do is rotate things. And as I said, I'm not going to explain it, but um, the B that you see in there is an angle that is in radians. Uh, I set up my A originally to be in degrees. If I click on this, hopefully we've got, yeah. We're going to go from 0 to 90 degrees. I'm just going by 21 steps, which will give us 4.5 degree rotations is what it's going to amount to. But in order to let cosine and sine do what they're supposed to do, which is in radians, I have to convert this. So the A immediately gets converted to a, a B value uh, by taking it times pi and dividing it by 180. That's the standard conversion for uh, degrees to radians. So B will end up in radians. That will set this up. And let me just show you what it looks like. Okay, there is a, uh, a dashed line curve. That's what it's at right now because A is equal to zero. And I'm not even going to show you the values of A. I'm just going to show you what happens when I play it. What you'll notice is that the, the pinked rotating dashed line is keeping its shape. It's not actually changing shape. So all I'm doing is rotating it about the point zero, zero. And you see that it goes from Y equals X squared and right there and will rotate right into x equals y squared perfectly right there. So now keep in mind this is not the actual flip that the red line, the red line y equals x is indicating. To do a flip about that line you'd need a three-dimensional graph and um, I thought about showing that but I at this point I think I, we're just going to keep it simple. All I want to do is convince you that uh, y equals the square root of x is basically related to y equals x squared and um, I think this achieves that goal. All right. All right well there's only one other thing left to do let me go ahead and shut down a few of these things that we don't need. Let's put back our main parent equation okay so y equals the square root of x is the one we're going to be studying it's the parent function what do all the little kitties look like? Well there's a lot of ways of writing this. I would probably write this in uh, a couple of different forms, but our basic equation is going to be y equals um, a times the square root of the quantity x, no, just x minus h. That's what we want, x minus h, and then plus k. Now, I'll show you in the next video what h and k do, and um, 
what A does. Uh, should be no surprise what they're doing. They're having very similar behaviors to what we saw before. I'm not going to actually say it. I'm going to let you think about it. You should be able to tell me now if you've watched the other videos what these things are going to do. Uh, but uh, basically I'm just going to let you sort of figure it out uh, at this point and check out the next video and you can see if you're right. So that's it for meet the parent, the y equals the square root of x, and uh, you got a quick look at some of the kids. And of course it didn't like that because <laughs> I didn't define a, h, and k. Well actually I guess I do have a defined but it's not what it's supposed to be. And then h and k are not defined. So let's go over to the um, final screens. Uh, again, this is A Tutoring Enterprises, and uh, we were talking about how to graph the square root equations. Specifically, we were talking about the parent function. Okay. Um, my name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent.com. It's a tutoring website, and it has all kinds of good information about uh, my hours and my prices and things like that. If you're interested in uh, setting up an appointment, you can email me at uh, tutent at neb.r.com or you can call me at 402-421-3536. I do online tutoring in physics, math, and chemistry, and some engineering uh, with Skype, and I do uh, in-person tutoring in Lincoln, Nebraska. Let's come on down. Uh, this is my standard little shareware for the brain. Uh, plea. If this helped you, feel free to send me a dollar or two to the, my PayPal account, 210 at neb.r.com. I'm hoping that uh, in some time in the near future I'm going to be able to get a camera and you'll be able to see my lovely face and see my calculations and we'll talk more about uh, actually solving problems rather than just showing you how to do some of this stuff on the graphing calculator. All right. And then here's going to be a little white screen, which uh, right now you should see various uh, links popping up, although probably not too much, um, but we will make some connection to some of the old quadratics and some of the future videos that I've yet to do. And uh, last and, and not least, please uh, like the, uh, hit the like button if uh, you like the video. Heck, even if you didn't like it, go ahead and hit the like button. I don't mind. Um, I appreciate you watching the video, and uh, until next time, have a good day.